Welcome to our next presentation on basic 1D gradient descent. We're going to look at models and the simple cost function. It'll turn out to be a parabola and then we'll take you through the basic 1D gradient descent. Mohammed, please. Uh, thanks, Matt. So we have the same setup. We have the input x. We have an output y hat. And there's a mapping here. And it depends on a weight. Oh, again. Sorry. There's a mapping here. And it depends on weight. And this would be y hat of w. And it's a simple map, right? Yes, it's just a simple math. And uh, uh, so basically, y hat of w equals to wx. And we have a desired output, which is uh, y. So we want this prediction to be close to this ground truth or this real value. So we have some error between the prediction and the ground truth. Yes, that error would be something like this. Cost function would be y minus y hat of w squared. So we want to reduce this thing as we get better and better estimates of w, see what, if we were perfect, should go to zero. Yes, exactly. in this case. All right, so let's look at what's next. And to do that, we have to erase the writing, which we can do together. Yes. And it's actually quite interesting to do this simple case because the simple case can actually turn out to be the complicated case, as we'll see in a minute. Now, here's the picture of our cost function. There it is, C of omega, or W as a function of W. It has a minimum, and we'll start with some initial guess. We want to somehow go down to the bottom of the parabola. So we actually call this point something like... Uh, w naught. W zero. Right, W zero. Great, so now what we want to do is find a way to slide down. This is where it gets very interesting. And this is the picture. You can see the, all the lines, and Mohammed will take us through it. There's a blue tangent line to the curve, and you can see right here that you, you can't distinguish between the tangent line until you get to about here, and then it separates from the curve. Uh, exactly. So the point is going down this tangent line to reduce the cost function, reduce the c. So if this, er, this, this distance would be our w delta w, and we have a distance here, which is d from here to here. Yep. Yep. And this uh, here is the angle alpha here. So okay. alpha is related to the slope of that blue tangent line. Exactly. That's the definition. So alpha equals to uh, d c d w. Uh, tangent, right? Tangent, exactly. Tangent. Tangent, tangent. tangent alpha. Yeah. yeah. Sorry. Which is equal to uh, d over delta w. So basically that D is equal to DC DW delta W. So we just replace this D or just, yeah. Here, I'll do it. <laughs> Sorry. It's okay. DC over DW delta W. Right, that's right. So we... This, this, So we have, a, we have a triangle whose base is delta w here and whose height is given by this expression. Yeah, exactly. So if we want to uh, 
the, the, the amount that this uh, C function changed is if you call that delta. Delta C. C. And that goes from here down to there. Yep. So that, that's the delta C, starting at W. And then this is a point we could call W1, right? Right here where, where oh, oh, it's a little higher. <laughs> there. There's W1 where my finger would exactly. say to write so it there. if we go down, this would be W1. Right. And this would be the change in the cost function. Yeah, as and we're sliding, sliding down, so to speak. Exactly. And this change could be approximated by this line. You see, we have just this much error. So this change could be actually approximated with this line, yep. this value. So we actually write that here, delta C approximately equals to DC, the W delta W. Basic first year calculus, tangents to curves. Okay, so now what's next? The next is how to choose this W. Right, because this we know, we have a representation of exactly. that, but we don't know how to choose that. So for that, we can have a guess, something like this. If we choose delta W equal to DC over DW and actually multiply that number with minus eta since we are going to going down we're going down because this is a positive sloping up mm -hmm. and the minus means we descend exactly and then if we plug this delta w into this equation yeah let's have a look yeah, maybe we can do it here yeah yeah you can go over there and do it so delta c approximately equals to, we just plug this part to in, this in there, yep. minus eta dc dw uh, uh, actually squared, since these would be multiplied. Right. So, so yeah, yeah. Now, now can you tell me something about delta c? Are we sure that it's going to be decreasing? Exactly. So the point is this part is greater than or equal to zero. So if we have a positive learning rate here, which is greater than zero, and go down the hill, delta C would be decreased. Fantastic. I guess everything is done. It's crystal clear. Or is it? Uh, actually, there is a trick here. We have an approximation here, not equal. So we have to pick this so we don't go too far, right? If, if we slide down this curve down here, we'll end up on the other side of the exactly. parabola. Exactly. So this approximation only holds if this delta w is small, which, is, which means that our learning rate or uh, our step, our learning step is small. So this gradient would go down, go down only if our step is small, so we don't end up somewhere here. As long as we are close to this parabola, this is a good approximation. It's a good approximation. So I'm a little puzzled about one thing, and that is this, where did this come from? Do you have any idea? That actually is a very good question. That is the part we can talk about the motivation behind this line which is some sort of heart of this algorithm. So this is the heart of the descent algorithm. I'm going to stick this over here. Now, what, are, what is this? Is this a pure number or is it something else? And it turns out, and it's not well established in the classical literature, that this is something else. And to see it, Let's assign units. I mean, cost could be money, dollars, and maybe this is also dollars or something else. So we're going to assign units. So the units of W is equal to B, and the units of C is equal to A. That's the units of C is equal to A. Now, this equation has to satisfy the units. So if we just look at units, 
we have B on the left, and we have delta C, which has units of A, and we have this, B. Now, what do the units have to be for eta? Well, so, clearly, yeah. we yeah, must have should be B2 over A. B squared over A. And these are the units of eta. Hmm, I think I want to rewrite this. So I'm going to rewrite this as A over B and take one of these Bs and stick it downstairs and I get A over B. And now we're left with the B. So in terms of the units, everything works because we have, this is unity here, and this B equals that B. That means eta has those units. Now let's look at this. If this is an increment, it's a delta C increment, a delta W increment actually, then we're dividing it by itself. So this can be thought of as like a unit vector along the axis of W. And of course there's a minus sign here, so the unit vector is pointing backwards towards the minimum. Also, the actual value of eta is going to have some constant so we don't go too far. So also you can write eta therefore like this. Eta is equal to some numerical value alpha times a unit vector which is given by this ratio times an increment in W. So you're actually moving a given amount along the W axis towards the minimum of the parabola because of the minus sign and you're keeping this alpha which is a numerical quantity small enough so that you're hugging the actual curve so we don't want to go down here where the tangent line is separating from the actual curve and that's the key part because in multi dimensions we will again look at this unit vector and figure out where we're going to descend so that we reduce the cost function. You just extend it using partial derivatives in multi-dimensions. Good work. Perfect. Thank you.